Welcome to Heartbeat Christian Academy and to this introduction video. Why do people study? Why do people attend Bible schools? Why do some people study for years and years to receive a qualification? I believe this is an important question that you have to start off with on this journey. You need to ask yourself the question, why are you studying? Why do you want to study? Is it because you want a qualification? Is it because you want to be acknowledged or you want a title? Or are you studying in order to show yourself approved like the word says? Are you studying to be approved as a workman of God who correctly handles the word of truth? Are you studying to be empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can be the light and can be the salt that Jesus said you are supposed to be? Heartbeat Christian Academy is a Heartbeat FM initiative and we originally started to facilitate and promote and offer affordable and free Christian education. So we want to empower the body of Christ. We want to build the church by empowering and we do this by structured education. But we never lose sight that it is the Holy Spirit that develops us. It is the anointing of Jesus Christ that enables us to minister. We cannot minister without the anointing. You get a lot of people that are very educated, that have a lot of qualifications, but they have no power. And at Heartbeat Christian Academy, we want you to have power. We want you to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We want you to change your environment, to change the area where you are at, wherever that may be in the world. That is my heart's desire. It's not so that you can say, I studied at the Heartbeat Christian Academy. I've got this diploma or this certificate, or I've got this qualification. It's not about that. It's about empowering people, releasing people in ministry. We see ourselves as an organization that is part of the Church of Jesus Christ. We have a local church. We are involved in local church. We submit to local church and we've served in local church for many, many years. So we don't see ourselves as any form of replacement for the local church. In fact, we ask our students and we inspire our students and to a degree we instruct our students to be involved in local church. Because the local church, we believe, is the answer for society. The body of Christ, the ecclesia that Jesus said, the church that he was going to build is what's going to push hell back in every area of society. So we have a great respect for the church. I myself have been serving in church for many, many years, almost 30 years of ministry this year. And I can tell you, I love pastors. I love leaders and I have great respect for them. We are not by no means trying to replace anything that the church is offering. We are merely trying to structure some of the education because what we have found is out in the church world that discipleship a lot of time takes place in a very spotted fashion, pretty much all over the show. So we've tried to, by looking at our phase one, phase two and phase three curriculum, we've tried to accommodate and facilitate a lot of the training that cannot take place in church. For instance, in our phase three curriculum, we have certain subjects that even pastors will find extremely handy. And sometimes pastors will contact us and say, can I just do a course on hermeneutics, on how to interpret the scripture or homiletics, how to preach? Can I just do a separate course on this? And we say yes, because it's not about following phase one, phase two, phase three for us. It's about offering the correct education at the correct, a correct moment for the correct person that will release them in the power of ministry. That's what it's about. It's not about just saying, I know this, I know that, reciting scripture. No, it's about living the scripture. So I, I trust that you are catching my heart as I'm having this conversation with you, that it's not about the paper, it's not about the certificates, it's not about something hanging on your wall, it's not about calling yourself a pastor, it's about being released in the power of the Spirit and changing lives around you. Being effective and productive in your knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. And as you embark on this journey, you will learn a lot of different things. Some of it you might have known. Some of it might be new. But I trust that some of it will be reiteration and repetitive 
in order for us to actually start taking action and start living out this great commission. You see, my brother, my sister, my co-laborer and my co-pilgrim, as we are journeying together, we are supposed to fulfill the greatest commission and the greatest instruction Jesus left for the church. And that is to go and make disciples of all nations. But it doesn't stop there in Matthew 28. It says teaching them. And that's what we want to do. We want to partner with the church of Jesus Christ and assist to teach. To teach, to edify, to empower and to release into the area of ministry. So God bless you as you journey with us. I want to take you through a few documents as we start this conversation and we start this journey together. Let's start this in the right way. Let's look at the statement of faith and this is by no means the full statement of faith. But I wanted to share some of these ideas with you so that we can look at it from a biblical perspective. The Bible is the inspired and the only infallible and authoritative word of God. Yes, we believe in the Bible. We believe in the, in the integrity of God's word. And we have in our courses everywhere we communicate this. There's a lot of higher criticism and textual criticism and aspects that have infiltrated the church and have infiltrated many denominations. But we do believe in the fallibility of scripture. We believe in, in the one and eternal existing God who exists in three persons. In other words, in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. It's not one God for all religions. We don't believe in that. We believe in, in God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. We believe in the deity of Christ, the virgin birth, the sinless life. We believe in, in the aspects of Jesus Christ. And some theologians call this a Christocentric interpretation where Christ is the center of what we believe. We believe in the, in the resurrection. We believe in the death. We believe in the burial. We believe in, in the reigning in power and glory that Christ is at the right hand of the Father. We also believe in the resurrection of the living and the dead. We believe in judgment, that everyone will have to stand in front of God. We, we don't say there's no hell. We don't say there's no consequence. We don't preach uh, people with fear to repentance, but we do have to tell them the truth because it's the truth that will set us free if we know the truth. We believe in the redemptive worth of the cross and we believe in healing of the spirit, soul and body and that physical healing is part of the atonement and therefore paid in full. This will be communicated through many of our courses. As you do those courses, you will hear this. You might not agree with that 100%. There are some people that believe God can heal. There are some people that believe God might heal. There are some people that believe, well, it's, it's like rolling a dice. We don't believe that. But at the onset of our journey together, we don't expect you to agree with all of our statements of faith, just verbatim and say, yes, I agree with that. But we do expect every student as he works through the curriculum to search the scripture for himself and then come to a proper conclusion. We also believe in, in the restoration of the believer's authority. Therefore, that we rule and reign with Christ in this life and that the Authority that Adam lost has been restored in the second Adam. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the speaking, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, in the functioning of the gifts of the Spirit. Sometimes not very popular at this stage, but we believe in that. So if you have a stern belief against that, it might be difficult for you. But we also want to invite you to come on in, have a look at the information and decide for yourself. We believe in, in sanctification through the Word and the Holy Spirit. How the, how the believer is led by the Spirit and from the inside out changed to, to live a life that's sanctified, a life that's holy. We, we can live holy, not from a law perspective where we try and do it, but as the Holy Spirit inspires us and changes us and guides us, we believe that you can live a life glorifying God. 
I put in here num number 11 because I want to make sure that pastors are not threatened by Heartbeat Christian Academy. I want to make sure that those that are involved in ministry that know and that have a great respect for the Church of Jesus Christ are not threatened by us and think that what is this Heartbeat Christian Academy trying to do, trying to, to replace the church? No, we're not. We, we, we know that we are not the answer for the world's current condition. We know that the global Church of Jesus Christ is God's chosen vessel to equip and to train and to empower and release through the gifts of the Spirit and the fivefold ministry. So we have great respect for the gifts of the Spirit functioning to change and edify the church and the fivefold ministry functioning in its fullness. And we just want to come alongside, partner, and assist the church in its in its work in every city across the nations of the world. So how do we do this? Well, how do we actually live this out and live and function this out? We have three phases in our curriculum. And I'm now talking more about the online because the, the attending Bible school students will not have all these subjects. They will have limited subjects and they will attend class uh, one hour or one uh, once a week for three hours and, and complete three lectures a week. But let's just look at the phases. Phase one is a certificate in Christian discipleship. And what we cover in this phase is Christian Basics 1. We do a survey of the entire Bible throughout this course. Uh, so we are trying to, to do this bit by bit, that, uh, that we do some biblical studies as well as also some theological studies as well as some instructional studies and then you will also notice that we have some skills courses interwoven in the curriculum and at this stage of of me recording this introduction the skills courses are not compulsory so we're not saying that students have to complete those skills courses but in a certain sense some of them are critically needed uh, in, in order for us to be effective in our ministry so christian basics one and then the Old Testament survey, how to listen is a skills course, then values of Christ, then an IT skills course, which is Word, then Christian Basics 2. Uh, you will notice both of these, Christian Basics 1 and Christian Basics 2, come with companion workbooks. Now, obviously, for online students, that will be slightly different because those workbooks are, are translated into an online questionnaire or multiple choice questionnaire. And then the Gospel and Acts, Discipleship Growth 1 with the workbook and then the survey of the letters. These are This is what, what we call phase 1. Our first phase which is the certificate in Christian discipleship. And you can have a look at, at some of the separate lectures in this phase. But for, this, for the purposes of this introduction, I just want to give you an overview. So that is what you cover in, in this Christian discipleship diploma. Or certificate but let me say this uh, working through this for a few years now through through these subjects this is an excellent excellent baseline curriculum for churches who do not have a discipleship uh, program uh, who do not have structured discipleship if you have a new believer coming in a new convert coming in they don't know anything about god or they might have limited knowledge or sometimes even have a bit of incorrect knowledge maybe they've come from a from a weird or strange religious background this is very very good this phase is very good because it, christian basics one and christian basics two really lays an excellent foundation and the values of christ as a course really opens up the doors for people to be able to actually live out their christian faith and even i mean students have been weeping before whilst doing the values of christ just to embrace those values and to see those values and how valuable those values are in society so this is a great phase and also for me even as somebody who's done a degree in theology and who's done numerous different theological studies i learned a lot in in this certificate the certificate in Christian discipleship the first year, I learned a lot. I, I must say I anticipated that uh, it would be very basic. But as I started studying this, I was very inspired. And I love lecturing these courses. I still love lecturing them every year by year. Every year I learn something new. So this is something that I must say one can use 
for a basic discipleship foundation in your church because in Christian Basics 1 and Christian Basics 2 you are going to be covering quite a bit of the fundamentals if not all of them of the Christian faith. Then phase 2 where we move more into the leadership side of it you are doing courses like Christian Maturity and you are doing courses like Christian Leadership 1. Uh, so you can have a look at the courses there you've got Equipped for Victory or equipping for victory you've got the old testament survey the second one and then improving conversations again those ones that are at the bottom are your skills courses marriage and fi family which is critical and a very very good um, marriage and family course uh, even for maybe just as a separate course and again all of these courses they can be used as standalone so they don't have to be in the phase to be used they can be used as standalone but they do offer value as you are doing them as a student and we've seen tremendous growth and we've got tremendous testimonies of those students that have been through these courses through the years and and even pastors that have come in to the school and they've said you know what um, this has changed our lives and that's what blesses me is that people's lives are changed then we've got uh, a christian maturity and we also go uh, there again we've got windows uh, uh, basics and improving personal relations and we've got study of romans increasing your self-confidence the leadership book and then the gospel of john so again uh, this is an excellent excellent uh, phase to use and again a lot of these you can use uh, separately i mean like for instance christian maturity one uh, talking about the love walk talk, talking about family life raising children a life of adoration and you look here at, at marriage and family those two courses together will ensure that your church if you have a church a local church uh, and there's no focus on the family and the family starts deteriorating and falling apart you would be surprised how that influences the entire kingdom of functionality in your city where you cannot be effective because of the fact that the family is not enriched and strengthened so these courses really i mean i didn't honestly understand everything when i came into this uh, curriculum but now as i'm doing it year by year i'm seeing the value of it then phase three and very exciting phase because we're talking about advanced diploma and ministry but here we've got ministry principles and praxis which is talk talking about a lot of the practical uh, aspects of ministry we've got the third part of the old testament survey where, where we are now completing the old testament and then the prescriptions of christ again similar to the values of christ but you know again focusing on the on the life of christ you know there's such a lot of voices in the desert saying different things but if we really boil it down we can argue about a lot of things and theologically we can get into a lot of debates but we need to look at christ and this is what our phase is center on the life of christ how did christ do it because he uh, is our is our author and the, our perfecter and we have to keep our eyes and look unto him so a lot of times we can be deceived by deceiving spirits by by uh, people coming with very persuasive arguments but when it boils down to the basics we have to look at christ and see how he did it and then from there onwards we will be able to uh, to actually appreciate that and, and understand what it really is about and then pastoral training man this is a course that that I've really worked on hard because we've got some of the CLT part of the course, but then we've also got some value added where we're doing hermeneutics, homiletics, how to preach, how to um, interpret scripture, how to do Bible study properly, then how to do weddings, how to do funerals, what is the job description of a pastor. So yeah, also you will you will learn a lot about that. Uh, there's also uh, in our course, uh, especially in our leadership, there's about church administration and all sorts of stuff. So throughout the three phases, you will most definitely be equipped. Now, what I said to you before is I did a degree that really cost me a lot of money. And I, I actually, when I selected my subjects in the third year, they were selected primarily for the uh, purpose of training myself in church administration. And I was quite... Um, I don't want to use the word disappointed but a bit disappointed in the lack of meat around those subjects because uh, you walk out there and you still don't know how, what to do you still don't know how to run your church you still don't know how to establish certain leadership structures in your church that sort of thing 
in at HBCA at Heartbeat Christian Academy, you are not going to have that problem. You are going to know exactly what to do because these courses will train you how to do that. You've got the study of Corinthians and then Christian leadership too, which is essential for me. You're doing the first one in, in phase two and you're rounding it off now with a with the second one in phase three. And then you, you're going to the gospel of John and also managing people, improving English. Like I say, these uh, skills courses, they are pretty uh, adaptable. Uh, I mean, they sometimes change. We, we have different ones coming up. Uh, we don't always use the same one, but uh, they will be available and you can select them. Currently at the making of this introduction, the skills courses are optional. So we are giving them to the students as added value. Man, I've just recorded uh, and I'm still busy actually finalizing computer essentials, which, you know, takes somebody that uh, we might have students coming in that's maybe what, what they say BC before computers. And what we did is we, we linked this up with the ICDL, the International Computer Driver's License, with our 18 years experience in the IT industry and the courses that we've written before. And we've come up with a course that will take a, 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 a BC, a before computer student from the start straight through to the point of actually overcoming uh, his fear of technology if the student is working and the student is serious about his studies. And that is what we want to sort of just say to you. We are in a position where we want to add value to your life. That's all we want to do. Now, I want to just share some of the code of conduct. Now, this code of conduct was initially written and developed for our Bible school students, for those who attend classes. A lot of these um, aspects will not be applicable to our online students, but I want you to catch the heart of our organization because this is the heart of the organization that we uh, have a code of conduct, that we have excellence. And, and we want to just communicate that. And I'm not going to read it, but... We, we yes, just say here, yeah, the Bible school is a ministry of excellence, which aims to establish Christian standards. So we want to have excellence in what we do. We don't want the world and, and those studying at, at, uh, at circular institutions looking at us and saying, man, what are these guys doing? We want to have excellence in what we do. That is why we really do the best we can do. Uh, we don't always have all the resources that we need to do it but we really do the best that we can do. We try to have good audio on our videos. We try to have good backgrounds. Uh, we try to have good lighting. Uh, we really try to have good content. We've, we've trusted the Lord for the best possible curriculum. And I do believe that's what God gave us. We stepped out in faith. We started teaching this curriculum and the Lord's just been blessing us and adding to this. Uh, we In the school, we, we talk about a dress code, but you can also think about this just in terms of the way you live your life. I mean, you don't want to be a lady that is provoking men and be a Bible school student, even an online student, be involved in church and then go to church uh, provoking men, having men look at you in a, in, in a, in a dirty way, um, you know, being an instigator of sin and sinful thoughts. Uh, you don't want to do that. So we are saying that we must be modest. We, we must dress smartly. Um, we are also expecting that our students abstain from tobacco. Now, you might say, you might be smoking now and, and you might say, well, can I not st study at Heartbeat Christian Academy if I smoke? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that God will lead you into a point where you are delivered and set free because God does not want you to be addictive or addicted to substances. It uh, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it, it might even be overeating. I mean, I, I, I lost uh, 20, 30 kgs the last year. And I, I was uh, suffering from obesity, which affected my condition, my body and, and my blood pressure and all of those things were out of sync. And I had to make a decision after years of ministry. And, and uh, I, don't, I don't say that, you know, uh, uh, weight is always, a, 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 you know, something that you, that you can control. I, I'm sure there are reasons why people have health conditions that's out of their control. But I, I was preaching in a, at, a, at a children's home. And a young boy came and he, he hit me on my stomach and he said, you, 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 you fat day. Eh? And I thought, is this a good example for me? So I, I asked the Lord and I said, Lord, you know, I've had a problem. I've got a great appetite and I've had a problem all my years. And I said, how am I going to do this? And the Lord took me down a journey. What we're saying is we, we're not going to criticize you and attack you and say, oh, you know what? You, you're overweight. You can't study or you, 
you're smoking and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I don't I don't think anybody that's doing drugs or, or that's really addicted to alcohol in a sense will, um, you know, will want to study. But if they are studying, we just pray that they will, as they study and they and they go through this course, that they will receive victory in those areas, that the Lord will set them free in the name of Jesus. That like we've received that freedom in Christ. And then also we, we're talking about the immoral living. Now here again, uh, in a city where you have your students, you don't want your students living immoral, going to clubs and then sitting in the Bible school on, on evenings and, and, and having their little Jesus face on. Uh, we, we say this uh, and we expect students to actually sign this code of conduct when they attend the school. So look, you, you, you are uh, in a way representing the school. So we don't want to be associated with, with those things in terms of uh, your lifestyle. Then financial policies, we just say that, you know, honesty, integrity in terms of finances is critical. So, you, you, you know, we are accountable to God and we need to understand that God will look at the way we manage our finances. And if we are cheating and stealing, and I don't even know why theology students, I, I know a few years ago, a few of the theology departments in our country were under, under investigation where some of the students were, uh, were crooked in their ways. And I thought, how can you study theology, uh, the study of God? How can you be somebody that wants to enter into ministry and have a desire to, to do something for Jesus and then think that Jesus doesn't see you or, you know, he doesn't, see you when you're doing the wrong things no he does see you he sees us all he sees everything we need to empty our hearts and be pure in front of god in terms of that so i don't even think that these conversations um, should be held with people but uh, unfortunately through experience we've seen that uh, people have um, you know not lived out their christianity and still want to be in ministry pastors sometimes even and then uh, for the students that are uh, attending students there is a cancellation policy where you know not applicable to you and then just all the assignments it just gives some criteria of the assignments and then class attendance uh, prior to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, class attendance required was 90 percent what does that mean for the online students or the distance learning students it just means that we as an institution we don't just expect excellence, but we also expect commitment. People that are committed. You know, the devil is going to try and stop you in this study because he hates it when you come into knowledge. Uh, Isaiah 4, 6 says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And a lot of times that lack of knowledge penetrates the church to a degree where people are paralyzed because of their lack of knowledge. And as an institution, as we are sharing knowledge and, and, and we've got all these opportunities for you to study, uh, to show yourself approved uh, to correctly handling the word of God and to walk into the victorious areas of the Spirit's power and the authority of the believer. We've got all these opportunities. Now you have to grab them and the enemy is going to try and stop you. So we are promoting uh, excellence in everything that we do. That is what we talk. And when we talk about the 90% attendance, it refers to people, you know, showing up for class. It also uh, sh uh, says here yeah, about uh, three hours a week, uh, like I said. The, uh, and then the one, th the last thing I want to mention is just social media. You know, we we all get hyped up, we all get excited, we all get frustrated, um, we all want to voice our voice, and and we all get sucked into the natural world. I want to say something to you now that you must never forget. Uh, you might be in the world, but you're not from the world. This that's what the Bible says. We are not fighting for the natural kingdoms of this world. We are fighting for the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God that is in the earth now. We are part of that kingdom. And that is the kingdom that we are going to work for, that we are going to support, and that we are going to focus on. A lot of times you will see things that upset you, political things, uh, government-related things maybe, um, you know, even religious things where there's arguments. Uh, you know, we are warned that quarreling will only ruin the listener. And a lot of times even responding to things, if you're putting something online and you, you give a message and then you get flack for it. I've, I've been criticized before. Uh, people have, have given bad comments and people have tried to enter into debates with me. You need to 
focus yourself on what God wants to do through you and, and, and withdraw yourself from those kind of involvements. Uh, a lot of times the devil is trying to get you off the track. So you've made a decision to study now. You've made a commitment and you say, you know what? I believe God's got a call on my life like I know he's got. And I want to equip myself for that call. So I've enrolled at Heartbeat Christian Academy. I've made a decision to study through Heartbeat Christian Academy. And what happens then normally is the enemy tries to sidetrack you in some other way. Now here you will see, like I say, uh, um, on social media a lot of times, uh, people like to lash out. We put this in our manual. We just say that people must reflect Christ on social media. And, and part of our code of conduct is, is that reflection of Christ. So, I mean, I, I believe that we've covered a lot in this session just to talk about the three phases that we have, the options of studying and all of that. Each student will be communicated with um, through the platforms that they use. I, I wanted to make this a bit more generic. But there are certain things that, uh, that I believe that helped me in my studies. And one of those things is that I actually had to make some commitments. Yeah, you, you have to make some commitments. Uh, you have to commit some time. Uh, and what was told to me when I started studying at university, and I also studied through university, uh, two different universities and it was also a, a, a correspondence related back then uh, we didn't have a lot of online stuff and what was said to me back then was you need to commit a certain time a day a certain time in the day so if you go and work out the length of your courses you're going to work out your study objectives when and how fast you want to finish your uh, course material you have to work and then work gradually, work every single day. You know, uh, Stephen Covey uh, calls this the law of the farm, where you are sowing the seeds into yourself. It's growing gradually. We cannot have quick fixes here. And uh, cramming, uh, we know even if you're cramming for an exam, it doesn't work. The gradual intake of information is critical. God is using our faculties, our body, our spirit, soul, body, but He's using our faculties, the way our mind functions, the, the fact that we need to repeat things to remember it, the fact that we need to gradually take things in over a period of time, and we need to heed to those aspects of humanity and human existence and work with that. So what we suggest is that you set apart a time that you can set apart. This might be uh, something that you're sacrificing, maybe uh, uh, your favorite television show at night or something like that. You need to look at yourself as a person and say, I'm a morning person, I'm an evening person, I want to set the time apart this time. And then you need to get into uh, prayer and ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord for guidance before you make those commitments. And then after you've made a decision and you say, say for instance, you've said, you know what, I, I will take seven to eight every night and I will do studies then. Then set apart a, a space in your house, wherever you are at, where you can go do those studies, where you are uninterrupted, where there's not a lot of distractions. Go and set that place apart. Then commit to that. And then follow up with a commitment. And if you break your commitment, if something happens and somebody comes to visit one night, that sort of thing, then make sure that you adapt your plan and get back to your action plan and then gradually finish the work. The biggest mistake that I've seen after years and years of education, I mean, I've been in, in education for many, many years, uh, from business education straight through to IT education, and the biggest mistake that I've seen people make is to, is to try and leave everything till the end. This is sort of human nature, and then trying to cram everything in at once. Let me tell you, with biblical studies, and, and I think with most other studies, you will not have the benefit by doing that. If you do that, you are going to lose the benefit. You are going to become frustrated. You are going to uh, hand in work that's of a low standard. And even if you pass the course, even if you, if you complete all the assignments, you do everything you're supposed to do, you are not going to derive the value. You're robbing yourself of the true intent of what we're doing here. And that is to really uh, empower you you're not going to feel empowered. You're not going to feel enriched. You are going to be un under constant pressure and the enemy is, is going to bombard you with different things until you feel that you're wasting your time studying. 
So I want to just ask you at the onset of your studies, as you make your commitments, as you look at your goals, as you look at your motive, you ask yourself, why am I studying? Do I want to write something behind my name? Am I title driven? If your motives are not correct, you, you can even still pray to God and ask Him to help you to get out of the fleshly motives and to get into the spiritual motive. To start seeing that studying is not something that uh, you do to impress people or to, to, to have a title, but it's there for you to edify yourself so that you can be effective and productive in your knowledge of Christ and that the Lord can use you in the environment where you live. And I'm excited about that because we are seeing miracles across the nations of the world as people are doing some of these courses and lives are being changed. And that's what we want to see. So to summarize, you've now seen the, the values that we have. You've looked at our code of conduct. Uh, we've, we've looked at our statement of faith and uh, we've gone through that just helicopter view briefly. And now the final thing that, that I'm mentioning to you is it's time for you to set aside those commitments, to have a look at the time frames, and to look at this from a logical perspective so that you can truly derive the value. I want to just bless you in your studies and thank you for even considering us. We are humbled to be partner with you and to just walk the road with you. We don't say we know everything. We, we get revelation from the Lord every day and we are growing still in the Lord, but we are just excited that the Lord is using us in a way in your life and that we can partner with you, walk the road with you. I want to end off by, by giving you my contact details so that you should have them, but I'm giving you my cell number so you can WhatsApp me with questions if you have questions. And I'm also giving you the email address so you can send me emails. If we don't respond instantly, it's not because we don't want to. It's because we have a, a, a quite an amount of, of students attending and we've got multiple ministries. As, as you will see, we've got the library. We've got a, a church that we've planted and we've also got the academy. And in all of that, we believe that we are building the kingdom by empowering the church. So there is the contact details. Uh, we have numerous books, resources, audio books, uh, and eBooks available. Uh, this is at our Christian library. And anything that you need, you can contact me personally, and we will do our utmost to help you and to give you what you need. Uh, we just trust that God will take you from glory to glory. I always give the banking details so that if people feel they want to partner with us or they miss the details there's the banking details and once again there is the contact details and god bless you in your studies and i really trust that the lord is going to enrich you and he's going to expand your territory and that you are going to move into new areas of power in the kingdom of god in jesus name god bless you